What's up, my friend? Welcome back to your daily dose of Brood War. Today, we're going to be looking at a game from the ladder here. Stork in the top right versus Sharp down here in the bottom left. And both of these players made it into this season of ASL. Stork, Stork and Sharp. Sharp, I am so happy to see you there. I think he is really a fantastic player. And... As someone I've met personally, very, very driven to win here this ASL. He wants an ASL title so badly. You can see it in his eyes. He's got that dog in him. And he wants to win. Stork, I'm not so sure about, man. This guy is the dinosaur toss. He's been around forever. He's always been a mogul. Such a strong and smart player. But I'd honestly characterize him as probably a better coach overall. He's the guy that you'd want on your team if you were going to be picking, like, a, for example, like a KCM team tournament. That sort of thing where you've got some weaker players, you've got some stronger players, and you really need a good coach. Someone who can explain the game and give you a good idea of how to take on a series. So that's really where uh, Stork's power does lie, is in those series. Is very good at taking on a stronger opponent and finding a good build to to take them out with. And he's generally a bit of a slower player who exceeds more in late game and with tactics rather than just speed. So we'll see if Sharp can overwhelm him with his APM or will he get outmaneuvered here by Stork. I expect that Sharp is going to be able to take him down. This guy is on top of his game at the peak of his power here, I think. And really looking for that ASL title. I wouldn't be surprised if we just saw uh, a really quick game here. What the heck? Did you guys see that? Is this freak reverse ramps, man? What the hell is that? I think he was actually like out of vision there. Because there's like a patch of vision. Like if you stand like right in this one little corner here. You can see this like little hex square. I think it's this one right here. You actually can't see down the ramp or up the ramp. It's a really weird position here's a normal ramp right this is a reverse ramp that's because the game never had ramps going downward they were never coded into the game people had to like take a ramp and manipulate it around in a circle to actually make it into a real ramp gets one marine there but great micro you can just see how powerful sharp is handling that first sell it with ease first dragoon is coming out here he will need to run on this bunker Got to get this bunker out here pretty soon. But he's going to start the CC first. And having a second marine coming out here. Or th sorry, excuse me. A fourth marine coming out here with the vulture. Means he will be able to push everything back. Sounds like we just had the SCV. Oh, there it is. Still here in the main base. Going to get taken out. Dragoon is really stuck here. That's super annoying. The Vulture and Marines will fall back. Now the Vulture can slip out on the map and kind of hide out somewhere. We are on Fighting Spirit here, guys. I don't know how this is still a map in the modern age. I think it's still in the ladder pool, guys. Probably have it vetoed. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't seen it in my ladder games recently. But, um... It's like an instant veto for me. I hate this map. This map is, this map is absolute trash, but... Somehow, it's still popular. Explain that. Vulture here at the front. We'll have mines shortly, but... Doesn't have them quite yet, and he's going to end up losing this SCV. So, without any bunker here... Ooh, this is scary. Okay, we're going to get mines in just one second. Okay. The Dragoons didn't come forward to challenge. He was assuming that maybe a Vulture might have run around here. Could be coming in towards the natural, so... Making sure that that's not a possibility here. And now the vultures are unleashed on the map. They're going to start to lay down mines all over the place. He's looking for some great mine positioning here. And he will get some really decent mines out on the map. And no bunker. Look at how greedy Sharp is right now. So much confidence in this man. He's playing against a random barcode at a very high rank. Doesn't know 
that it is in fact Stork. There's no banter back and forth between these two. Them revealing themselves to each other. So it, both of these players, unknowns. And the mind positioning here is fantastic. He killed the probe, he stopped the third. He's gonna have these mines up here, delaying that third by quite a bit. And what will be the follow-up plan here for, for Sharp? Is he gonna go drop ship play? He does have that starport. So where is the drop gonna be headed? There it is around the side here. The best plan is probably to wait for this observer to arrive. And then once the dragoons are clearing the mines, that's the time to come in and look at the perfect timing here. Oh my God. Look at how s just s slick this is right now. And he's gonna come and hit the front here as well at the same time. Oh, he pulls out of the wall at the very last second. Look at all the probes. How many of them are gonna go down? Mines being laid here in the main base. He's gonna get that dragoon kill for free. Adding on a few more mines here. His mine positioning, so, so good. He's gonna get this kill as well, maybe? No. Oh, but he gets a bunch of hits here on these Dragoons. Really, really well done. Delaying the mining here in the main base, and he still hasn't taken the third yet. If one more Vulture was coming to prevent this third, this would actually be the perfect harassment. And this is still alive, are you kidding me? Getting up here into the natural. How did he manage to outmaneuver the Dragoons in the main? That is crazy. Stork just kind of falling apart here. This is exactly what I expected. Was Sharp to find a speedy way to victory here. Utilizing his much higher APM and overall, you know, game speed. The way that he plays is incredible speed and very tight harassments. And he is gonna head across the map again with another drop it's gonna be spotted this time the vultures at least are gonna be spotted but oh can we uh see stork get a tank here oh he gets one tank that's a little bit frustrating trading a goon for it don't want to be losing this tank here but does trade out another goon we don't have siege mode yet look at how greedy sharp is even not getting siege mode here it's gonna finish up soon and he's got two tanks so he's not gonna take too much damage meanwhile a lot of probes going down right now He's going to lift up and back off after killing off quite a few probes. The dragon's going to head back home. We still don't have that third base, guys. This is ridiculous. Sharp getting so much damage. He's even going to get some mines on high ground. Looks like that might be picked off. Pretty well done there by Stork. Making sure he doesn't lose any more dragons to mines. But he's going to lose a few more probes here. Nice pylon block right there. Gonna get one more probe? No, not gonna happen, but still a ton of damage has been done by Sharp. Look at how many more workers he has. He's got 10 more workers than Stork now. Oh my God, this should be an easy road to victory from here, but Stork, well, he's gonna try something. He's got a fleet beacon here and double Stargate. He's gonna go two base carrier off of this. And you know what? That might be able to do something. We do have that dropship coming around once again. He does need to be very careful with his dragoons because he's got none in the wall right now. And I don't think any in production. Oh my god, is he really going to go out on the map with all of his dragoons? He's going to go out on the map with every dragoon. And it's just going to build a pylon back at home. Oh, if we had the dropship moving, he really needs to get this moving. If we had the drop inside the main, this game would be over right now. I don't have a single Dragoon here. Not even one. Not even one Dragoon. Would have been so rough, but... Carriers are coming. That opportunity is going to be missed here. Dropship being forgotten by Sharp. It's okay, though. He did already see the Stargate and the Fleet Beacon, right? He had those vultures here at the back of the natural. He spotted that out. And so we're gonna get a good idea. We're gonna get a good view of how Sharp will it, it is uh, able to close games here against a two basing carrier player. And this is, this is standard Stork, man. We don't see this very often from Protoss players. No third base and straight into two base carrier. But when we watch Stork, it's almost a foregone conclusion. This guy loves to go two base carrier. 
It really suits his style. Just making good decisions with his carriers. You know, some, some really solid micro. And uh, a lot of the times he can come out on top. As hard as that may sound to do. Playing two base carrier against one of the great Terran players. He can sometimes pull it off. I don't think it's going to be possible here though. There's just so many. So many advantages here for Sharp. He's hitting a really nice timing here. He's got that plus one. He didn't uh, even invest in a science facility. So he's not going to be able to have plus two on the way. But he's just going to hit one huge timing with a massive army. You can see he's 20 army supply ahead right now. Stork is going to give himself every opportunity to come back in this. He's going to have the observers here clear out these mines so that he can counterattack this, but Stork is just in such a rough spot right now. He's got only two carrier and the army is banging on his wall right now and the tanks are going to come forward and probably siege up here shortly. We are going to have Carriers attacking some of these Goliaths, but the interceptor count is just a little bit too small. The army of Stork is getting on that third base high ground, but there's nothing there to deny. I would much rather see the army actually get in between here to prevent, you know, rallies of vultures and the dragoon or rallies of vultures and oh god, the drop in the main as well. Are you kidding me? During all of this? Oh dude, Sharp is Sharp is so good. Look at how much damage he got from that. He got five kills on this vulture. We're gonna have that counter attack coming in now, but the natural is gone for Stork. He's barely mining here right now. He's only got 19 probes. That's just enough to keep one base mining actually. So even having that Nexus is not really worth it at this point. Uh, a natural Nexus would still be helpful though, because we are gonna run out of money soon. Dragoons here just kind of chilling. Carriers are going to go across the map. Okay, he's going to try and go out here. He still is able to make two more carriers, surprisingly. And he has uh, interceptors still on the way. We're going to be able to come up here and maybe, you know, kill these two tanks and bust the natural. Is that what we're going to see? Oh, God, no. We're going to see a bunch of Goliaths here catching these uh, carriers in the middle of the map. And look at that. Charon boosters was forgotten. Forgetting Charon boosters here is a big mistake. Missing that Charon booster upgrade means you're not going to be able to run these carriers down. You're barely even going to be able to get damage on them. But look at this Stork being a little lackluster with his control. Losing, uh, you know, some health on these carriers. The goons are going to come in now. Uh, tanks are going to siege up. He needs to pull back the, uh, the goons here. Oh my god. Look at this. What am I seeing right now? Stork. Can you please not run right into Goliath? This is my cast, man. What are you doing? At least try to make it... <laughs> At least try to make it even, man. What? What is happening? Give yourself a chance in this game, man. All right. I don't think he's listening. He's going to throw a bunch of goons here into these tanks. He's actually going to get two tanks pretty much for free. Like, it's a little bit uh, a little bit rough for Sharp. He's going to lose maybe this tank as well, but his army is just way too big. Going to fly back in here towards the natural. Can he take another fight here? Mm, that's way too many tanks, I think. Too many tanks, too many Goliaths. Coming back into the natural, let's see what he can do. Gonna deal some damage once again with these carries. Now he's got five carries. I wish he had six, but you saw what he uh, <laughs> what he did there just a moment ago. The mistakes that were made uh, with these carriers. I'm gonna start to take out SCVs here. He didn't target down the CC or anything, and Goliaths are coming back. I have an army sieging up here in the natural. Really need to pull that stuff away. Coming in with the, the goons would be really, really good right now. There's only Goliath here in the natural. So fighting straight up goon versus Goliath is a great trade. It's like an observer finally coming out. That means he will be able to push forward here. Here's the that goon versus Goliath trade. There are a few vultures in here as well. 
the Goliaths are or the, the the Goliaths are gonna win the day here. The goons will be going down. Oh god, he's gonna get on top of this. GG is called. Oh boy. Sharp really just did it to him, didn't he? The drop play really outperforming Stork in this game. Shutting him down, not really giving him a chance to even make this two base carrier a real thing. It seemed like, you know, maybe he was going to get some work done when he came in and killed the two tanks. That he might be able to push through the natural with the goons and, you know, really deal some damage here. But after walking his carriers up into a bunch of Goliath, he really killed the chances for himself. Now we've got one more game here between the two and... I don't know, guys. Are we excited to go into this one? I guess we'll find out. Let's see what this game is like. Jumping into game number two. Okay. Game number two here is going to be on Apocalypse. We got Sharp down here in the bottom left. Making Stork look a little bit silly in that last game, but I think Sharp can make most Protoss players look pretty silly, honestly. We won't hold it against Stork too much. Although we will hold against him that uh, that carrier control after I just talked him up about great decision making and carrier control. You know, at the early stages of that last game, he goes and flies a carrier and how are you going to do me like that, Stork? How are you going to make me look like a fool in front of all these people? Sharp here. I don't know if he uh, realizes this is the exact same player. I don't know if uh, Stork realizes it's the same player either. There's no chatter back and forth between these two. So I don't, I don't know what we can assume here. Let's just assume that they have no idea that they're playing against even a professional player at the moment. Just grinding away on ladder, practicing out some builds. Getting their skills up before their entry into the ASL. And let me take a look at when these were played. It was January 30th of 2024. So very recent games here. A little bit before the qualifier. The qualifier was on the uh, February 3rd and 4th, and the ASL season officially will start. I believe it is February 25th or 24th. I can't quite recall. Around that exact same time, we're actually going to have the North American League that is hosted and managed by uh, Artosis himself, NA StarCraft Masters which I am going to be casting and hosting for the group stages. And the uh, finals, the semifinals, will be a cast by Artosis himself, which should be a lot of fun, guys. Hopefully, you will stop by one of those streams. That's going to be around August, uh, uh, February 25th, 26th, something like that. Whenever all the games are played and the replays are sent to me is when I will begin casting that group stage. So look forward to that, guys. I know I've mentioned it a few times. I'm going to keep mentioning it keep mentioning it over and over, so I hope it's not too annoying. I do want to promote that as much as possible to you guys. And um, I really don't know who's going to win that. I think there's a lot of good players in North America. There's a lot of, uh, you know, old players. Not a whole lot of fresh faces. Most people have been around for a very long time. but have varied in power over the ages and we'll see who's in real good shape right now. Who's on top of the meta and who's able to take a win here. It's, it's nice to uh, play like an NA thing, like uh, oh NA only. We're not going to have like, uh, what's it called? We're not going to have like Bonneth or DeWalt or something come in and dominate. We're going to have... A whole bunch of just NA players, and we're going to get an option. We're going to get to see how they are stacking up to each other. Now, this is an interesting push here. We've got a lot of SCVs coming right now. There are two gateways, and there is range on the way. So, 
This doesn't seem like a high win percent chance, like, uh, attack here. He's gonna get two Marines right off the bat. Pulling the probes at this moment, pulling forward the Dragoons as well. The Dragoons are doing really good work here, killing off a lot of these Marines. But they are very needed for actually killing Vulture here. The Vulture will wreck everything, but two more Dragoons do pop out. He's gonna just hide this last Dragoon, run it around. And that's a very good move. It's gonna force some SCVs to chase. The probes are gonna chase the Vulture here. Oh, he does keep the bunker up though. The bunker coming up is actually huge. But maybe he can save this Dragoon. Save the Dragoon, run! The Dragoon goes down. He might lose his second Dragoon as well. A lot of SCVs have fallen as well. 16 to 19. This is this is kind of a, a, a W here, I think, for Stork. Has Shark put himself into a really bad position here? There's gonna be range in a moment. We've only got one SCV. You know, we brought like seven SCVs, six SCVs, something like that. Here comes two more. Range is just about to be finished and two more SCVs are gonna be brought to the front. That's still not gonna be enough to actually keep the bunker alive forever. Oh my God, he can't move this into range. Seven HP on that. I would actually jump out of the bunker and try to kill that. He does. <laughs> he goes for it. He gets the uh, one single Dragoon and one tank here is gonna get tracked down. Yikes, this is not good for Sharp, man. Sharp is in a big, bad position. Um, can he dig himself out of this hole? Losing so many SCVs, going down to just 16. Ooh, that was really not well thought out by Sharp. Picking a very raw engagement here. Can he get a big hit from Mines? Oh, to even things out. Looks like he gets three Dragoons. Wow. That was a big mistake from from Stork. Both players, competitive mistake making here. How many, which player can make the most mistakes? How many mistakes per minute can we make in this game? Yikes. Well, we almost got the Nexus. We got it about halfway down. Didn't end up working out well for us, but the follow-up play will surprise you. A two factory follow-up here. He's managed to prevent any information from leaking to his opponent about, uh, you know, what he's doing for the follow-up here. You know, there hasn't been a vulture or a, hasn't been a zealot or a dragoon or anything or an observer to come across the map and actually tell Stork what's up. So he might try to throw down a nexus here. He, You know, he's got four gates. So as long as he's continuously pumping off of them, he should be okay. But he might rest on gateway production for a moment. As you can see, nothing being made in these two gateways. If he's just constantly making Dragoons right now, he would probably hold this no problem. We've got five more Marines, We've got two tanks here. Oh, that's not good. Two tanks are actually gonna get caught right now. Here comes the Marines to try and buffer for that. Vultures are gonna make their way to the front, but uh, if he can get some mines, oh God, that mine is really good. That mine almost going off here. Oh, it's going to get off. I think it just barely got killed. He's going to try to shove forward here, but that's a lot of goons. The goons are going to target down the tank. The tank is going to fall. Two dragoons do fall as well, but this is not looking good. Just pure vulture rally from here from Sharp. And I don't think that's going to be enough, guys. We've got the one tank here on the high ground. Trying to bait the Dragoons into... Oh my god, what was that? Bit of a moonwalk there. Tank moving straight northward. I didn't know that the, the tank treads went that direction. Looks like he's going to lose both of his run by Vultures here. And the third base is on the way. And Stork is going to win this game, dude. GG. Sharp making a big mistake with that initial push, man. Let's take a look at that push one more time here. And just see exactly what Sharp was doing. What was he thinking right in this game? You know, it is possible. Absolutely. I think that Sharp is super favored over Stork personally. Oh, so it was that Nexus first. I was uh, talking about a lot of other things at the time. So didn't realize that it was a full Nexus first. Or was it? Was that gate done? Was that gate thrown down first? I thought it was. Oh my god. I apologize, guys. 
We've had a bit of a rough day today. There it is. That was the Nexus first. So he was doing a pretty common Nexus bust, but it was held off very, very well by Stork. Let's see that one more time. We're just making pure marine. We're following up with the Vulture. We're pulling all the SCVs. How many SCVs did he actually pull? He saw this coming and there's eight SCVs pulled. A lot of the times when you see this push right here, the Protoss player will just pull the SCVs or pull the probes, excuse me, and wait for range and just try not to try to lose as little as possible. But let's take a look at this again and just how Stork was able to get in here. He actually got the Zealot on top of the Marine, which is actually really, really big. And the Marines were focusing damage onto the Dragoons, but the uh, Vultures weren't really targeting the probes here. I think you need to actually target probes. Just go for probes. Looks like he's gonna get quite a few probe kills right now, but the SCVs, I think, end up going down. He's focusing on the uh, Dragoons right there. Dealing that damage. Was there like a misstep in the micro or the macro or something? I don't know. But a lot of SCVs went down and overall a really decent hold here from Stork. Losing a lot of SCVs there. Won't be able to save the bunker. If he had just had enough SCVs here, maybe he could have killed this Nexus. Maybe he could have gotten mines in front of the base. And made it really hard for Stork, but... The fact that he killed off that many SCVs and he got both the vultures and he didn't lose too many probes, Stork handled that pretty darn well. I guess that's a real testament to Stork's uh, kind of prowess, his overall macro or his overall micro. God, if that Dragoon had gone down too, that would have made a world of difference here. The bunker would have fallen a lot slower and these SCVs might have been able to save it. That's wild. And with the bunker still up here, the tank becomes way more problematic. But with the bunker down, all the dragons can be, or all the marines can be dived upon. The dragons can kill the tank, and that is it. Yeah, you can't sleep on Stork, man. How did he make it into the ASL? Well, he made it through another strong Protoss player called Motive. Motive getting taken out by Stork, along with some other players. You know, he he didn't have a totally easy way into the ASL. It was a little easier than most. Uh, some people got really railroaded this season, like uh, Scan, our buddy Scan, unfortunately found his end at the hands of Light, which is really rough to run into in the finals of, uh, of a qualifier round. So, you know, S Stork made it in. He's got some skill. You can see that here, able to defend his Nexus first, where a lot of players would just die to Sharp. Uh, who's trying to bust the Nexus first. This guy is so quick. And he is so good at making these sort of aggressive plays. So the fact that Stork was able to hold that off. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll give him some respect. We'll give him some respect. We were clowning on him a little bit from that last game. Seeing the way that he was cr controlling the uh, carriers there and that. But you got to give him the respect that he deserves. He is the dinosaur toss. But he's not extinct yet. He is still in the game and he is going to perform at the ASL. We'll see. We'll see how well he performs there, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been your daily dose of Brood War and I'll see you tomorrow.